All right, I'm gonna start the video here. Here are the time codes where you can go. You got the first one where the body and different types of bodies you can make, the best ones and the worst ones. Uh, then it goes to the head and then the uh, main drive system. And then at the end, it shows you how it all gets put together. All right, first up, we got paper mache number uno. Next, we have a 3D print, so you could 3D print the body and the head. And then there's also foam, which is probably the best idea. So paper, paper mache it takes about a week to make. Prone to ripping, must be kept in a cool area. And it's not that sturdy, but it's the least co it costs the least. As you can see in the pictures, there's rips, and you have to keep it in a cool area or else it will start ripping and tearing, which is not good. So I, that's why it's the first one, because it's not the best one. And next up, we have paper, 3D print, sorry, 3D print. You have to give it time to 3D print. It's sturdy and strong, depending on what type of material you make it out of. And then it costs the most. So you can see on the right, there's different 3D printers. They go from like, what, 200 bucks to like $5,000. There's some 3D uh, images of the 3D print right there, of the body and the head. And then third, which is probably the best, is foam. So it's already made. You just have to wait for the shipping. Uh, yeah, uh, it's sturdier than paper mache. Uh, it's mid-ring cost, so it goes fifty dollars for a sixteen-inch and eighty dollars for a twenty-inch ball. As you can see, there's some pictures. The bottom right is from eBay. It has the most bought from. It's like one-day shipping in UK. And then here I'm doing like a small little. So I started with doing paper mache, which didn't end up pretty well so I might have to do a foam ball uh, so I'm doing a walk around this this is where I put four layers on as you can see it's I, it's given a dr day to dry which is not that long it yeah as you can see I'm just walking around it trying to get a lot of good angles the extra stuff you see on top is extra paste it's not really problem it just comes off you just sand it off all right and here's me making the paste so it's uh, I did for every two cups of flour there's two cups of water uh, the flour is pretty cheap you gotta stir as you can see there's chunks in this one but you keep stirring stirring it will become smooth and pasty which is what you want. Maybe add a little more water so it's not just like hard and thick. All right, here I am with my glove. I'm gonna go in and get the brush, which is in the thing. I've already got one strip on there. I'm doing this one-handed, so it's kind of hard. Just putting it on there. And well, okay, if you've done paper mache before in like fifth or sixth grade, you know how to paper mache. And next up we got, so this is a rip. So the top part is a rip that I did not want to rip. And then there's the, there is some that I cut so that it didn't rip bad. Here's me trying to take it apart. There's the top part off. And here I'm taking off the bottom part. And... There it goes, it unleashes, or unlatches. It's pretty smooth on the inside, even though there is ripples. As you can see here, there is some bad parts and then there's some flat parts which are good but then the bad parts are not that good and hard to cover up right where the tape was there was a crack right there 
There's the uh, both of them. So basically, after a day of, I let them dry for three days, and after a day they become oval shaped. So that's why paper mache is not the best. All right. So here I've got the head. So basically, what I did was I'm trying to do that. I drilled three big holes that these would fit into there, and I glued around them. And on over here, so they were stuck in there. These are the rollers I roll around. I found where the center was, and then I found got my this guy. Put it right there in the center, so I can line those up. This is gonna be what's on the inside that holds this guy on. But this one's gonna be on the outside. This one's on the inside of the ball, so it stays on like that. So I just had to figure out how to perfectly do that. So it only goes one way. So as you can see, it attracts this way, but it repels this way so that the head will be straight uh, when I put it on. And I know which way is straight. Flip it over. I put a little speaker on some Velcro. So like if I wanna play some music or like actual sound effects of BB-8, I can. Oh, screw that. Velcro, there we go. All right, so there's Velcro, badly cut, but yeah. Put that back on. So this is the start of the head, as you see it rolls. It's a little loud, but it's smooth. All right, and here is the main base plate. That'll go inside of the robot, BB-8. So, I'm gonna move these off. What we got here, that off, is a Arduino Uno, but it's made by Elegoo. So it's Elegoo Uno R3. Arduino is a open source thing, so like companies can make their own type or own Arduino. And here, I've got the mo motor shield, the, I don't know if you can read that, Hallelu, I don't know how to say that. Dual uh, VNH5019 motor shield. So it's for two motors. As you can see, there's a black and red for the left motor and a black and the red. Oh, black and red for the right motor, which is off camera, right there. And then here's the power. This and the motors, so the connector pieces and the motors came off of the power wheels. You know, so those little cars that little kids drive around. Uh, these the motors do still work though, even though this power was, was old. So, and these don't come pre-soldered. These black pieces and these blue pieces you have to solder yourself. That is a lot of pins. Better you say so. So I'm gonna plug it in. Line it up. If I can't, there we go. And press down. Already glued in the Arduino, so it's a little stuck in there. So right here, I'm gonna zoom in a little. Oh, all right. So here's the Bluetooth module. As you can see, four pins. So we got five volts, ground, TX, and RX. So on here, spin this around. We got the zero pin, which is the farthest left one. Oh wait, that is off. That is off, hold on. Do that. All right, there we go, now it's in. So this is the zero pin, and then this next one's the one pin, yellow and the orange. So the yellow goes, and the zero pin goes to the TX on here. So the zero pin on here is the RX, the one on this side is the orange, which is the TX. The orange goes up to here to RX. So RX here goes to TX and RX here goes to TX. So just, they're not supposed to go TX, TX, RX, RX. They're supposed to be flip-flopped. That's what I tried doing it. Uh, TX to TX and RX to RX. And it didn't work out. So once I flipped them, it, everything started working. And then over here, just in this round, I've got black and red for the ground, which is like the third pin in this way, and then the five volts right there. So 
So red, five volts, brown, ground. For, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out. So this is the power. Oh, I've got one more thing to say, actually. So if I can do this. Uh, okay, so you see right here, those two right there. What that is, is the jumper. So in his uh, one, he had a jumper right connected to these two in the square. Not the circle, the square. Which that, that jumper means that this power supply powers not only the drive, but also the Arduino. But since I don't have it connected, as you can see, it's not connected right there. I have to supply another uh, two sets of power source. So I'm gonna have like a nine volt battery going to here to power the Arduino. And then if I zoom out a little bit, I've got a 12 volt battery pack right here. As you see, eight batteries. Each battery is 1.5 volts, pretty sure. Ah, close it up. This has an on and off switch, so I didn't really put an on and off switch on the thing. This also was a plug from a power wheel. As you can see, there's Velcro. And as you can see over here, there's Velcro. So, I zoom out, pan up, zoom back in a little. I can Velcro it down. It has a poorly job job do Velcro, but oh, stuck there. So what he did, he did like, he put multiple AA batteries together. He soldered them together. And yes, I have a solder over there, but uh, I didn't feel like I was adequate enough. As you can see, the solder's over here. Oh, where's my finger? There, there's my finger. Solder over there, hot glue gun. Gotta have those two. <laughs> it's like doing any project. Oh, there goes my thing. So yeah, I bought the Arduino Uno. Wow, the Super, so it came with the Elugu Uno R3 in the Super Starter Kit. You don't have to, this was like $23, which it has a lot of goodies in here, but you can buy the thing for like, it was either eight bucks or 12 bucks. I don't know how much exactly it was. You're probably wondering what this, so this square right here is gonna be where I'm gonna put the motors. So motor, motor, I don't know how I'm gonna put them on yet. Maybe zip ties, I gotta get little wheels for them. Um, as you can see, there's a black circle going around. So this bit, this round thing's uh, too big. So I'm gonna have to cut it down some. Hopefully it'll be the correct size for the inside of the ball. Uh, yeah, so this is the, Main, the base plate, put it back right there. And yeah, so I've already put in the code, or the, yeah, the code. So it was really simple. I was just, so because I had the RX and TX, it wasn't working. So I thought there was a problem with the code. There's not, if you go to this video, download the code, the code works perfectly fine. Uh, but as soon as I switched those, put in the code, it worked perfect. Sadly though, this does own this type of Bluetooth module, HC-05 only works with Samsung's or Android phones, sadly. Uh, and yes, I have an iPhone, so I'm gonna have to steal one of my dad's old Androids so I can drive this around. Uh, maybe I can, yeah, uh, and yeah. So that's about the base plate. All right, so what I did was made it smaller, like I said I would. I added this wooden post, which is from the back of a old wooden chair. Simply screwed it in there, and I screwed it on the bottom, and it was left. And since this was in the middle, I had to screw it over some. And so for the head, I'm probably gonna get like a styrofoam half ball, put it on top of here. Get some trim so that it goes under. So I hide that and it looks like the head. But yeah, this is the end of the video. Oh, um, update on here. So like, yeah, they turn into ovals. That's why I don't like the paper shade because it just doesn't work on bigger things. 
probably gonna get one of those 20 inch foam balls and paint it up. Yep.